Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to my next lesson in my modern C++ series. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at another STL algorithm in the numeric library, the transform reduce algorithm. Now, this is a pretty neat algorithm in the sense that it's doing two things that we've learned before. Transform, which applies some operation to each of the elements in our container or whatever data structure that we're iterating through and then the reduce operation, reducing this ultimately to one value. This is a very powerful operation. And if you haven't seen my previous videos, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a little preview of those as I think it might be useful just to get you on the same page. So if you haven't seen previously in my algorithm series on STL here on YouTube, um, you can check out the transform video. And then I'd also recommend seeing the reduce video as well, just so you have a little bit of a grounds of what these algorithms are doing. Anyways, with that said, uh, take a look at the transform page if you need, but let's go ahead and take a look at transform reduce and just understand what it's doing. Now for today, I've actually prepared our code example as transform reduce is a little bit to write out. You'll see here in a moment here, uh, but it makes it a very powerful algorithm here. Uh, again, under the numeric operations, and you'll find transform and reduce here. So again, it's going to apply a function, that's the transform part, and then reduce the results down to, again, one value, let's say. And it can do this in an out of order manner, meaning that we do get the advantage that we can do things in parallel potentially if we have an associative and commutative type of operation that we're performing. Again, you can check out my video on reduce to see what that is. That's the same idea. And again, just a reminder, that was a difference between accumulate as we previously discussed. So anyways, let's go ahead and dive into transform reduce. And we're gonna see that there's a bunch of different overloads. In fact, there's six different overloads for this templated function here with various ways to call it here. So I'm gonna kind of scroll through these and then we'll look at a few of them. But the main thing to see that is transform reduce in its default form is basically doing a addition of all the operations and a multiply of all the operations. Now we'll have to keep kind of straight, which is the reduce and transform. And this is a little bit of a tricky naming thing. You'll just have to remember or keep the documentation open, but the transform part is the first thing that is performed, but that is the last argument here. So just keep that in mind, depending on the different overloads you're using that is consistent, um, but it doesn't, um, they're not listed in the order that the operations are read. I'm not exactly sure why, I need to think a little bit about that. I'm sure there's a good reason for it um, as to why that was uh, justified. <laughs> you know, I would probably have switched these around if I was designing things, but again, I just need to think about it perhaps a little bit more. Uh, so anyways, most of the C++ 20 versions of these functions, we can do things at compile time. So we've got const expert support here. And most of these, if we look at them, are of uh, a form that looks something like this. So let's just go ahead and look at this third overload where basically I'm taking in where I want to start looking at some data and where I want to end. So that's pretty much the same as all of our STL algorithms at this point, hopefully we're familiar with. We have an initial value. And again, that initial value matters because the type of this value that we're initializing to, so if it's inferred as an integer, let's say, that's the type that's gonna be inferred as the return type. So again, if you watched my previous video on uh, reduce, you know, there could be a little gotcha there if we put in a integer value here for the initial type, but instead start using a float. So just something to be aware of. Maybe we can play around with that today just to show you uh, that that holds here. Uh, and then we have uh, in this particular example, a unor, um, um, unary uh, transform here, which basically means this is how we're transforming all of our data, right? Some operation, maybe we wanna multiply everything by two or by four or whatever. Um, and and that's uh, by default, again, is doing just a well, if I look at uh, overload number three here, uh, applies transform to each of the elements and reduces the results um, along with the initial value over reduce here. And I believe this is, we'll actually take a look at this uh, third one here, um, right? By default, we're just getting the plus in the multiplies operation here, okay? Um, so we could apply some transformation, again, maybe multiplying every value by two or something, and then reducing it, which would be just successfully adding up all those elements, reducing to one number here. Now, again, we could pass in a binary reduction operation as we see fit. Maybe that's reducing it to just return me the first value that's over 50 or something, right? It could be as simple as that, where we just, you know, return and that's the value here uh, when, we, when we find if that's true or uh, return if we find a value that is you know, seven or whatever the case might be, right? So we could pass in these different types of um, reduction operations here. Most of the time we're just summing things. In fact, if we look at this closely here, 
Uh, it is just basically saying that the default operation of transform reduce or what that operation is, is an inner product, okay? Where you're just sort of summing component wise uh, or summing the multiples of uh, two uh, sort of uh, sets of values. Again, if you've done this in uh, game programming or machine learning, right? This, this sort of uh, inner product or dot product operation. Okay, so anyways, that's the idea here. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that reduce is uh, when we're working with reduce operations, we do need an associative and a commutative operation. If our behavior is non-deterministic and we need you know, locks and we can't just nicely iterate through things, we could run into problems here. So again, we need to think a little bit if you wanna use this for some sort of like concatenation operation where it's not necessarily commutative, right? The order matters in which we concatenate two strings. We might need to think about this a little bit. Um, so that's the basic idea. Here's our parameters here. Uh, we do have some constraints about things uh, being needed to be uh, move constructible. I believe that's part of the reduce operation, uh, as I understand here. Uh, and again, the complexity is going to vary. I mean, it's a linear complexity in terms of the number of elements that you're looking at. Uh, but if your transform and reduce operations are more expensive, right, if they're not constant time, then you're going to have to multiply in that factor. Okay, so just keep that in mind here. Um, let's see here. Uh, the other thing, uh, just a little note here is... Uh, the unary binary overloads um, for transform uh, are not applied to uh, init here. Okay, so just keep that in mind. That's just the initial value. That's for the reduce uh, operation here. All right, uh, and there's an example given. This might be fun for you to try out here, but I actually just want to go ahead and show some of the code that I've written here uh, and prepared for us uh, to show some of these different overloads here. Okay, uh, so I've kind of formatted them a little bit weird just so they fit on the screen. So you know, sorry about uh, you know <laughs> these these uh, spaces with the end line here. That might not pass code review, but um, the basic idea here is that we have a vector here of integers. And again, I've been explicit with the types here because that's what I'm going to be operating on, right? My initial value is zero. So that's the type reduce. That's the type I want return. So, you know, you want to be able to match uh, these um, types here. Um, and again, that might sound weird. That was something that we had to pick up on when we learned about uh, reduce earlier. Uh, in practice, you know, you, you might use transform reduce uh, just as is in this STL, or you might wrap it in another function. So you could actually check that these types uh, match on the container and the initial value. So that is some, some sort of constraint uh, that you could apply or a concept. Um, so anyways, let's take a look at uh, this first overload, which just takes in our range. So we're going to be looking at all of these elements. Um, and then I've got this here, result.begin. What's this here? Uh, well, this is what we're going to be multiplying each of these values by. Okay, so 2 times 1, 2 times 2, uh, and then adding those uh, results and then doing the same thing. 2 times 3, uh, and then adding that back to our previous results, 2 times 4, and adding that to our previous results, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to be building on this initial value here, okay? Uh, this is effectively an inner uh, product here, okay? Uh, if you want to think about these like two vectors or something, right? We're multiplying them, adding them, and aggregating to get uh, one uh, scalar value here. Okay, so that's the idea. Um, now we've got a few other overloads. Uh, overload number three, this is me just explicitly putting in uh, the exact same thing, but um, instead what I'm doing here is, well, we have the plus operation, that's our reduce operation, remember that comes first, and then followed by our transform, okay? In this case, I'm just multiplying everything by two. Same exact thing that we're doing here with this uh, result uh, vector here where I've just populated with twos, okay? Same sort of uh, operation here. We could do two times you know, the index or some other value or, or whatever here. Um, but that's that's the basic idea here. Uh, overload number uh, four here, just as an example, we can pass in an execution policy here. So here I'm just passing in sequential. Uh, let's actually change it to uh, parallel here. Uh, let's do that here, par. Um, so otherwise, basically the exact same thing here, except we get an execution policy to, again, try to do things in parallel. Uh, and then finally, in this uh, overload here, basically the same exact thing as we've been doing. Uh, sequentially, again, you can change it uh, if you have thread support. Um, and uh, we're doing the same thing, same initial value, plus operator, and then times equal to. So basically the same thing as uh, version number three, but we get the execution policy here. So let's go ahead and just compile and run this really quickly. Uh, and you'll see we get the same value at 72 here. Okay, so that's the basic idea. Um, we could increment some of these. Uh, let's do this by, uh, let's multiply everything by three and then add them uh, in our operation. So you'll see a few of these change here. 
Uh, right, so these ones we are multiplying uh, by two. Uh, and again, just to show you that it's the same uh, operation here. Uh, let's go ahead and update these here, make sure we get the same uh, value. Um, and there you go here, okay? So just showing a few of the different operations with transform uh, reduce here. Okay, so hopefully that's making some sense. Again, I mean, all, all we're doing here with uh, this transform reduce operation, let's go to the whiteboard here. Uh, again, if we have some values here, oops, let's draw that a little bit nicer here. There we go. Uh, let's split this in half. There we go. So again, if we have eight values here, uh, and we were working with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So again, just putting together the concepts that we've applied, right? We're applying some, uh, and we'll have to make this a little bit smaller. Sorry, the text is going to get a little bit wild here. Uh, yeah, that's that's okay here. Um, basically, this this little function here where we're multiplying everything by three, right? That's what I'm applying here. So times equals you know three to each of these elements. That's the transform. Uh, so then I'll have a set of three, uh, six, nine, uh, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four. Okay. And then I perform my uh, reduction, okay, which is adding these, getting a value of nine, and then adding that to the next value of nine, and then accumulating those, eighteen plus twelve, uh, etc., etc., etc. Okay. Now, if I use these execution policies, I can do this maybe a little bit more intelligently, say by applying uh, as I'm applying the transform to each of these groups here, reducing them to one. Uh, number right so there's not two stages necessarily uh, in this implementation uh, so again that's the goal that's where we get the sort of optimal uh, sort of output from I'll go ahead and put the code here but hopefully that makes sense with the illustration you can play around with this a little bit uh, I think folks avoid transform reduce just because it looks scary and takes a lot of parameters but you know if we kind of just break this down again to uh, look at this one more time here um, let's look at number uh, three here, I think is reasonable here, uh, which was uh, this one here at line 12. Uh, and again, I'm going to leave it uh, big here. Uh, again, just the range that we're looking at here. So from uh, beginning to the end, our initial value, again, be careful to match that type here, integer with an integer. Uh, the reduction operation, just plus, right? We're just adding uh, and aggregating that into the initial value. And then the uh, transform that we want to apply, okay, which in this case was to multiply every value by three first before we do the reduce operation. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Uh, transform reduce, very powerful. Uh, again, we can implement this in terms of inner uh, product here uh, so that you have that uh, operation uh, available to you. All right, folks, so with that said, as always, you can track your progress on course.mshot.io if you're enjoying these lessons or want to make sure that you can watch those reduce and transform videos. Uh, it's a nice way to do it, free to sign up uh, in a non-distraction environment or less distractions, I should say. <laughs> There's lots of cool stuff there. Uh, but anyways, folks, uh, let me know what you think about Transform Reduce, if you've used it, if you know it by other names and other libraries. I'd be curious to hear that. Uh, I know it's a super popular, again, if you're working in the high-performance compute world, uh, you're going to see Transform Reduce, and you're probably going to have a bunch of clever ways to actually use it, right? Uh, you're often going to be looking at a lot of data, uh, accumulating, reducing it, averaging things in image processing, for example, uh, for various filters. Uh, you know, there's, there's just all sorts of interesting use cases uh, for this algorithms that I'm sure you're going to find. Uh, so anyways, folks, with that said, thanks as always for your time and attention. I'll look forward to hearing from you and I'll see you in the next one.